Good evening, Vanakam, Namaskar to all the participants who joined this webinar, evening webinar with our beloved Kavita Sanvi, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, accepting the invite from Matific. So this webinar is going to be a very, very empowering session for all the primary math teachers, uh, principals uh, who have joined this, expecting a lot from you, a lot of interesting strategies. So uh, I like a very humble to start this webinar. Before starting this webinar, I would like to uh, introduce a Matific a little bit, what we are doing, and then I'm handing over the session to Kavitha Ma'am without much delay. That's what I'm going to do right, right now, right? Okay, so the flow of the webinar will be like, uh, I'm a digital math specialist from Matific team. So I'll be sharing a little bit about our company and then giving this webinar session to Kavitha Ma'am, okay? Just give me a moment. So as a company, what we are trying to do is we are focusing on improving foundational numeracy in the primary years. This is what we are trying to do. Uh, our company is founded by uh, interestingly mathematicians, Harvard, Stanford, and New York University mathematics professors. Though those are the professors who founded this company, making sure students learn maths in a very, very active way rather than a passive way. That's our motive through in engaging and impactful activities. And it's an online gamified math learning platform, as many of you know very well. And our vision is very impactful thing is to provide every child in every country with a mathematical experience of highest possible quality. And that is the reason we are collaborating uh, very intelligent uh, math people in India like Kavita Sangvi ma'am to introduce these kind of webinars. We are sure about our vision to make sure every child is getting highest possible quality of mathematics education. And this is what our founders are, Harvard and Stanford mathematicians, Professor Ras and Shimon Shokin. So like, uh, as you see, our academic board is mostly with uh, Harvard, Stanford, and also with a uh, cognitive psychologist, Professor Don Abraham, right? So a lot of uh, tools in this time we are using, especially in this pandemic time, like uh, YouTube links, third party tools, digital resource, free online tools, right? As a teacher, now we become a super teachers to use a lot of interesting stuff. But one question we should ask ourselves, whether these tools are safe for our kids cognition. That's the one question we should ask before using the tool, whether you, you share a YouTube link to your stu students, we should think whether this link is safe or not, right? But Matific is a, don't worry about it. Matific is kids safe plus certified environment. You can confidently take this tool to your school or to your students. There is no problem if you use Matific for one hour or two hour in the kids cognition stage. That is what we found from Professor Don Abraham. He's leading the cognitive psychologist branch in University of California, Berkeley, by the way. All right. And definitely Matavik is improving the math scores by 34% if you use it for just 60 days. That's one thing. And this is what we are not doing. Okay. We are not giving you worksheets or neither digital worksheets. We are not doing this. Then what we are doing, what we are doing is like we engage students, we empower teachers, and we impact learning. If a student wants to learn angle, student will be sailing in a particular boat, he will turn his boat to a particular angle to reach the particular destination. Okay, this is how a student can learn angle if matrix is there in place. Similarly, for fractions, decimals, subtraction, addition, anything we have intelligent model, models, this is what we have. And uh, we can definitely help parents, teachers, uh, principal with amazing reports from matrix uh, tools. And uh, matrix in a brief is, we provide a lot of games and manipulatives aligned with your curriculum, CBSC, ICSC, IGCSE, IB, and a lot of state board curriculum. We are in, in uh, Tamil, Hindi, Marathi, and English languages in India. And uh, these are very, very personalized and adaptive platform. And uh, it's a good teacher digital resource. And uh, we can provide you a lot of reports. And importantly, Matific will work without internet. Yes, you are hearing correct. Matrix will work without internet and it can work in mobile phone, tablet, laptop, computers, anything. Like us, there are 14 million students and teachers in the world are currently using Matrix. And we uh, proudly partner with Atal Tinkering Labs, Niti Ayog, just because we are completely aligned with new education policy 2020, which is released in last August uh, 2020, new education policy. Because of that, we align with the uh, Atal Tinkering Labs, so top 100 schools in India who are having Atal Tinkering Labs, they are using Matific. These are interesting awards. And this is what the award I told you, the Kids Safe Plus Certified Environment. Any school leaders or any teachers, if you want to take Matific, first of all, confidently you can use some product. 
that is Matific here, Kit Safe Plus Certified Environment Matific. A lot of ministries trust Matific. Definitely, you can also uh, trust Matific for taking your into your school. And uh, we run a lot of pedagogical tools here. And uh, without uh, further delay, let me introduce Kavita, ma'am, here. Ma'am, you have to give me one minute time to introduce you because your profile is uh, such an interesting profile to share. So let me introduce uh, Kavita, ma'am, here. So yes, Kavita, ma'am, holds a master's in physics, master's in education, master's in philosophy of education. And uh, she is a certified advanced course in education leadership, which is a diploma course from a world-renowned Harvard University. She currently heads SVKM's CNM school in Bombay. She is a TEACH STG ambassador. STG, you know very well, is a Sustainable Development Goals ambassador and a scientist ambassador for India. She is an ardent physics teacher who believes that learning has to be experiential in nature for it to sustain over a period of time. She conducted many action uh, action pieces of research on same and was given global teacher accreditation by British Council in 2014. She is a British Council trainer and ambassador. In 2016, she was nominated as top 50 teachers by Verki Foundation for the Global Teacher Prize Award. A passionate environmentalist, she initiated composting as a part of school curriculum. And today, the students have created their own in-house school business of making cloth bags from old bed sheets. Really a great job, ma'am. The school's efforts have been recognized by School Enterprise Challenge. She is committed to spreading the UN Sustainable Development Goals so that children today can look forward to a beautiful and secure future and created a comic book on global goals. So ma'am, over to you. Like we like to empower uh, something for some, something from you regarding the strategies for teaching primary maths. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody who's joined here. And for this completely one hour, just relax and just enjoy the flow because I would like you to be complete students and just enjoy every single step that we go ahead with, okay? So I'm just gonna share my screen right now. Just one second, please. I don't think my screen has come to cross. Can you see your screen? Yes, ma'am. We can see your screen blank. But it's blank, right? Yes. No, it's not sure. Okay, now. Oh, great. Okay, so we're going to go in for strategies for teaching primary mathematics. And I know that COVID has really upset our life back and forth. But actually, I want to say that this year has been, I, I would wish to share gratitude to this year because it has taught us so much. And it suddenly showed that we teachers are amazing. We really, really, I mean, we really transported and transformed ourselves to a differently digital platform so effortlessly. So we truly are that great. So let's just give a tap on our shoulders. So let's start first with this simple exercise. I have a figure on top of you, front of you. Tell me exactly how many squares are here. And you can put your answers in the chat box. Oh, a lot of answers. Uh -huh. So there's somebody saying 16, 18, 21. Wow. 26, 21. Oh, wow. I mean, so fast. You're all calculating. Calculating is so fast. 21, 26, 16. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Somebody 39, 23. Oh, wow. So now I need to give you the answer. Wonderful. So the real answer, the right answer is 30. And I'm sure you know how you got that 30. So many of you all have got 30 out here. So we have a lot of teachers who have been really exploring uh, these kind of questions. So something like this, when you put across, it really makes life very, very interesting.
So importance of puzzles and riddles, you know, you, every time when you start mathematics, it's not with something like this. It stimulates critical thinking. It makes us, our students, uh, increase student participation because I had all of you putting in your answers and it was really a joy for me. And you actually connected this concept of squares to say a big square, a small square, a total square. So you connect it to a real life situation. And as I said, you already were thinking. And for me, that is much more important than any kind of assessment. And for most important takes away the fear of mathematics because the primary kids are very, very, very scared of mathematics. Also allows students to learn at their own levels. So I'm going to put across another thing for you now. Let's play something, okay? And I'm sure that all of you all play cards. So let's just look at simple card they're showing out here. And we have this cat out here where your 10 is 10. And then let's take Jack as 11, the queen as 12, the king as 13, and A is obviously your one. So what is the total? Put your responses in the chat box. Wow, somebody saying 47, 40, 47. I guess I'm going to see a lot of 47. So what is 10 plus 11, 21? So how are you getting this 47? Can you just put it across the chat box? Somebody saying 52. So 47, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. So 47 is the correct answer and wow. So something like this, if you want to teach addition, why not actually get them to have their playing cards at home and have them playing games? So give it some cross out here and say, take your cards and show me combinations of 15, show me combinations of 30. And I'm sure the students are going to love, enjoy those cards and come back with a lot of games for you. I'm going to show this, play this game out here. At the same time, I would like this link to be shared in the chat box, and I would like you all to play this game too. So I want you have go to the site and make combinations to make sure that you have a total of ten. So find sets of three monster cards that add up to ten. Kathy, can you please put the link in the chat yes, box? Yes, ma'am. It's already put. Actually, okay. it's already there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I would like all of you all to go to the link and let's play together. Uh, Vaniti, if you can just go to the above link, Shakti has just put it across. Um. Okay, all panelists are attendees. Can you see the link? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, great, great, wonderful. So, everybody's saying yes. Let's play together. In the meantime, I'm just going to run this video by myself out here also.
how many have finished playing the game and share experience with me. You enjoyed, great. So technology has been really supportive because even though we're not in front of the students, some simple games like this can really add fun in their life. And this is what we need to do in our post-COVID times, use technology to its maximum. Anybody else who's tried the game? And there's so many other games that, you could, that is available for you. Great, Gayatri. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you, Shraddha. Pami Deepati. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Okay. Nupur, thank you so much. Sonal, thank you so much. We got it. Yeah. Oh, just so minute. which concept of mathematics can you cover with this image? Yes. Okay, addition, wonderful, measurement of time, variables, calendar. Can you see all of the data? I mean, uh, let me just present it to what you've written out here. Are you able to see the data? What have everybody have written? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, fine. So, so you can all see what you've written right now. You've spoken about metric measures, what comes after logical clock, angle, time, angles. That's really wonderful because you've really taken the angles out here to see how he thinks is coming back to him, how he's able to lift that spoon. Wonderful. Addition also, what else can you come across in your primary classes that you can use a cartoon to teach mathematics? And you know children love cartoons. Speed addition, yeah, speed. What speed is it coming with? If I were to do this at this angle, if I increase the angle, will the speed be more or will the speed be less? Great. Network. Uh, I would like to understand what does network mean? Direction, time, measurement, wonderful. Reasoning, oh yes, definitely. Even asking them to model this makes them use a lot of mathematical uh, concepts. So even creating a simple project also would help them a lot. Balance, weight. Yes, weights is something that you can teach them also. So see the kind of ideas that you're coming across with this. It just shows your innovation. So cartoons is what really, really supports out here. So I'm so happy with this. That's great. So I'm going to stop sharing out here and I'm going to start sharing once again my presentation with you. Okay, so this is what we came across with the Rube Goldberg uh, cartoon. And as I said, if you can take even a Tom and Jerry cartoon, really your primary students are going to be crazy about your class. This is what I'm really, really, really fearing, you know when they come back to this. What are your feelings about it? Because all of us are so used to the autocorrect. I hope when they come back to class, they can think about this. The new normal, very nicely said, Brunda, it is a new normal. The students fear, yeah, when they come back to class, they might again go back to the real, uh, the world of fear. So we need to bring this back. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, so you have such amazing responses. 
So we're going to go now to a simulation. And let me just take that. Because fractions is one topic where I've noticed in the primary, the students are very, very scared. And I don't know about you, but I know that they are definitely scared. So how can we get over the fear of fractions? So just give me a uh, time. So when I go into this, let's go into some activities, okay? And I want to show exactly what I can do with math fractions out here. Ma'am, uh, I can see still the slide actually. Uh, you can still see the slide? Yes. Okay. Actually, I've gone to this. Um... Yeah. Okay. Let me just... Stop share and share once again this. Sure. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Yeah. You can make it as full screen also. Wonderful. So now we can see the full screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's see. Let's play now. So I'm going to just try seeing how we can play with fractions out here. I'm going to take one box. Cut it out here, go to here. Cut it into five parts. Now, what fraction is the orange to the entire square of five parts? Just really try your responses in the chat box. One upon five, excellent. I'm going to take another box, okay? And I'm going to, once again, cut this into five parts. And this one part, I'm going to mark it blue. So now tell me, this is one upon five. What is this part also? This is. One upon, excellent, one upon five. So what would be the total of this one upon five and the other one upon five? So let's take this box and say, what is one divided by five plus one divided by five? Wonderful. So if you take something like this, and you could really, really have some games across using the simple game. So if you take one upon five, and just let's say I take another one also. So what is this square? What would I write in this square? Three upon five, exactly. So three upon five. And then, again, this is about one upon five. So what will be the total? Four upon five. So you can have them play games like this. Another kind of game that you can have is even show equivalent fractions. So maybe if I had to just delete this entire thing. So just forget this square. Um, Okay, just take, let's take of this only. This is three upon five, and this if I take, and 
And if I take six parts out here, what would the fractions be? So if I were to mark here three upon five, and the other one here, I would mark as six upon 10, what would the fractions be? What would the relation between the fractions be? Equivalent, excellent, equivalent. So you can even show equivalent fractions out here. At the same time, all the operations out here, say addition or subtraction, all of this you can take it across using a simple tool like this and make fractions more appealing. So there are lots of other games also that we can take across. So games are very, very important to ensure that fractions become all the topics in mathematics becomes real to them. They feel that I'm not, nobody's judging me. It is easy for me to do that. So I'm going back to my slide. And this is what we just did right now. So why do, do we need to play games with students? First of all, it really helps them to explore the concepts. And the computational strategies and things become much more stronger. They allow them to explore. They don't, they're not stuck with just the numbers that I have given them, say one upon five or two upon five. They can play and make it three upon five, four upon five. They can do so many other things. So we need to allow them to explore and obviously deepen the mathematical understanding and reasoning. So playing games up till now, that the games that you played with me, each one has been connected to mathematics. Another very important thing that we've really learned in this COVID time is projects. And I think this projects, the need for projects is because whatever we do in mathematics is actually connected to reality. It helps us to communicate beyond the textbook because we're not, mathematics is not just textbook, it is of everything around us. And it stimulates curiosity and research and research is very, very vital and obviously to give a holistic picture. So let's understand the simple graph that I'm showing you across because every day one is just talking about COVID and the vaccination drive. So looking at this graph, I would like you to study the graph out here and understand the vaccination happening in Indian states. This figure is a recent one. The India's vaccination drive now we are a presentation of, I won't read the numbers. I have everything in front of you. But this is the real life scenario of today. This is our present population. We are currently able to give around 3.4 million doses of vaccine per day as an average. The total vaccination done so far, the number is in front of you. What will be the time required to vaccinate people in India? And how can we improve this vaccination drive? I think this project, and I'm sure all of you will agree, is something that every one of us need to talk. And mathematics is what supports our data. So I would like you to actually go to the site right now because it's the assessment. Assessment is very, very important because assessment drives learning. Whatever we have taught the children, at the end, if you want to know that our children have learned or not, we assess. So our request, uh, Shakti, please, if you can put this link across. Sure, ma'am. So, yeah. so then I can take them back to the slide across on the top. Uh, I have to type the link. No problem. Oh, one please second, one second. Now, Shakti, one second. I'll just take it. Um, So I would like all of you to assess yourselves here and maybe that way we'll get to know what have you understood from here. So I'm going to share my screen again, so again to the vaccination, what we had spoken about, the figures. I 
Shakti, are you able to open the link? Yes, ma'am. I can able to great. open the link. Okay, I great. I think... Uh, to all... Yes. Now everyone got the link? Great. You can follow the link, yes. I can see a Microsoft form here. Yeah, it's a micro form, um, Microsoft uh, quiz. So that's an assessment. Perfect. After the college days, now we are back to assessments. <laughs> I hope I can get all of you answering it because right now I've got not got a single response. No, ma'am, it, uh, it's a thought provoking question. So, yes, <laughs> it takes some one minute time. Yeah, Please great, give great, us some great. time. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Do you see any responses? Yes, yes, I'm getting a lot of responses. Only got 31. Wow. <laughs> we have a very intelligent lot here. I'm one among them, but I'll never show like what answer I told. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the answer is not important also. It's yes. the fun of having it, fun of doing it. I think so many of us got 50%. <laughs> I'm very far, very soon going to show the uh, responses. So I've got 83 responses and I'm so proud of them. Great. Wow. So I'm going to share the screen right now to show exactly how wonderfully you've been working. So as I said, Shakti, we have got a wonderful lot. We have 144 responses already, if you can see the screen. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that, yes, it's too, everybody's really, you know, gung-ho. But this is tells you the power of numbers. Because we see this huge number. But then we, what is this number actually representing? So you have really come across and given me a very good response out here. 158 responses. That's really commendable. Okay. 
and majority have got it. We are a population of 1.38 billion. So this is something that we do teach our students to at least understand what these numbers mean. If you're gifted 1 million, then actually how much money do you have you actually got in terms of Indian rupees? So when we say vaccination per day is 3.4 million doses, what is that number in terms of Indian uh, that we normally discuss? So majority have got it correct. It is 34 lakh. And which state shows rapid vaccination? Now this is also very important because we need to learn how to read the graphs because that's so important, and it shows Maharashtra. So that's also majority have got this correct. And the fourth one, I'm not asking you to do the sum, but how would you proceed to do that sum? If you have the present population as 1.38 billion, vaccination is 34 lakh per day. Until date, we have finished around 10 crore, 85 lakh vaccinations. Then how, what steps should I take to find out how, what is the remaining population left and how many days it will take? So I guess the majority got that correct in the last one. And that was a thinking question. So 186 responses. And again, once again, this is not about marks. It is just about applying your knowledge and seeing whether I'm able to do the needful or not. So simple projects like this also can really stimulate curiosity and interest in your students. Take a graph or any graph from the newspaper and make it interesting. So I'm going to stop share here and go back to my presentation. And obviously, when you talk about projects, the measures to improve the vaccination drive, I think here you can have your students, even if they're uh, you know, six years old or eight years old, let them read the newspapers and tell you what they can do. They'll definitely come up with really innovative answers. Just leave it to them. So what is very, very paramount right now is addressing the learning gaps when they come back. Because in this lockdown period, we had a closure of nearly 1.5 million schools. We living in cities, we were still better off because we had that connect to technology. But in India, 247 million children enrolled in elementary and secondary schools have been affected. In the 29 states that we have, we only eight states were, had open classes from one to 12. 11 states have reopened only six to 12 and 15 states only reopened classes nine to 12. I'm in Mumbai and let me tell you, we have not opened even one class physically this entire academic year, not for a single day. So when our children are going to come back, we will first need to find out where are the learning gaps. We have taught them through technology, but how successful have we been? So this is something that we have to take to address those learning gaps. Are you going to have use technology? Are you going to use some sort of a diagnostic test? All these are very, very important. So most important, the guidelines to support your students when they do come back. When they come back, focus more on the skills. Focus that do they have those computational skills? Do they have the critical thinking skills, problem solving skills? Because mathematics is a lot of word problems. You know, I'm able to apply the skills across. So these things, please focus more when they come back. Second, don't stress yourself. Just enjoy the journey because you know that that one year has been some sort of difficult, challenging year. Don't stress yourself. You're not a super person, a super woman or a super man. So don't expect too much from yourself and your students. Just go with the flow. For the first one month or two months, don't focus on your portion, but focus on the learning gaps. Use variety of resources of resource technology-wise. When you used it, it really worked. So use face-to-face, -face, use uh, activities, use projects, use 
every single thing around you to ensure that your students are enjoying your classes. Keep it simple. We're not here to impress anyone. Just keep it simple. And last, very much, very most, you matter. The teacher in the class matters. We have seen the entire year where we had technology. It was only you and you that made a difference. So when they come back to school, they will only be looking up to you to get them ahead, not anyone else. So please ensure and please understand you are very, very important in their life. And with this, I want to say thank you so much. It has been really, really engaging. And I've really loved your participation very, very much. And I would love to hear a lot of questions coming across from your end. Uh, Kavita, ma'am, we missed you for last 10 seconds. Oh, oh sorry. I we said missed... that this... Um... So were you able to see the last part of the uh, presentation? Yes, we can see that. Like last 10 seconds, we missed you. We missed your thank you note, actually. Okay, okay. So I just want to say that I look forward to your questions now. And yes, the assessment that you're going to be showing, Shakti, how the yes, assessments can happen. Yes. Yeah. And uh, participants, if you have any questions, uh, you can post it here in the chat box. Ma'am can answer one by one. In the meanwhile, uh, like ma'am was talking about the learning gaps. Thank you so much for addressing ma'am. Very few people are addressing about this learning gap in this online classes. So from Matific, we are also doing uh, some part of us. So what we are doing is like uh, we are running summer holiday homework program for Indian schools to bridge the learning gap. So it's a kind of a bridge course. So schools can take using the summer holiday homework, the Matific program. And uh, you can visit more uh, information about the matific.com. But uh, I'll share you a little bit detail about uh, what is this program? Why is this program? How is this program? And then we'll go to the question and answer session. So quickly talking. So why this program is uh, very simple. As ma'am suggested, there's a lot of uh, math anxieties there because of this online classes, like a lot of financial troubles, emotional uh, struggles is happening in the home. So the math anxiety is a very big problem. So we need to address that before school students come into the school. That's one thing. And what is the summer holiday homework is? Uh, it's a holiday package available from kindergarten to grade six students to fix the learning gap. It is provided from Matific and uh, the, the, the previous academic year content will be shared to the students. The students will get the revision of all the concepts through interesting games, interesting workshops shown by uh, like uh, Kavita ma'am, like a lot of things she, she have shown today through interesting games and manipulatives. And we ensure 100% curriculum coverage in this and kids love that. And how this can be happening, like how, how to do this uh, summer holiday homework is very simple. Like uh, just go to www.matific.com, like approach us, we will help you in setting up your school. And what is the reward of doing the summer holiday homework is after once the summer holiday homework is completed, we are going to run Matific Olympics or Matific Olympiad for Pan India schools. So students can actively participate in Olympiads. They can fix the learning gap. They can win exciting cash prizes, scholarships from Matific actually. So they are uh, learning well. So whoever learned well will be rewarded well. As simple as that. All right. So coming back to question and answer session, can we get certificate for the session? Uh, Manisha ma'am will talk later. Like what is that? <laughs> okay. And uh, let me stop sharing the screen. Kavita ma'am, a lot of questions for you. Is it only for maths? Yes, ma'am. Mathific is only for maths, actually. We are a math learning platform, numeracy platform. Kavita ma'am, you are on mute. Sorry. Okay. So I saw one question. Can we get certificate open? Uh, that's all. I don't see any other question. I think the chat box has been just... Um, Okay, one question they have asked. Good evening, everyone. How do we make children understand that zero can be a dividend and not a divisor? <laughs> Technical question. I think you know better about what to do, madam. Just take some activities and see how you can work it across. Okay, introducing uh, zeros. We have a lot of interesting activities in Matific. Maybe you can sign up in Matific and take some good activities uh, for introducing zero, ma'am. Definitely, I think it will help you out. Okay. 
and what else interesting i think even stories around zero will really work around so just see how you can work that out and there's nothing to teach mathematics through a story a story is the best way to teach about i think it's cool register for the same all students i think that you need to get uh, uh, connected to matific they are offering free access yes they are shakti yes ma'am so matific is uh, offering some complimentary access for 10 15 days you can take it out from matific platform you can also register in the website or otherwise uh, uh, just give me a moment i'll share you the number right yes. so in case if you are interested in matific then here is a slide for you we'll take up the questions just please mail to india at matific.com very simple mail address india at the rate matific.com we will help you out very soon we will help you out okay somebody asked how do you make children learn as i said before children lose um, you know you cannot keep a child con uh, that learning capacity or that attention driving is not very much in children they lose that attention very fast so every now and then you need to come up with something innovative also voice modulation in your class you are the actor you are the creator just make sure that you are acting it out very well and if you do that and as, as i said use a lot of manipulators use a lot of methods and strategies your class will be engaged and children learn okay and which type of activity will be suitable for making children understand the place value or concept Oh wow, that's an interesting question. So, place value and concept can be easily uh, understood using the money concept, like our tens, hundreds. It can be, or else the beats concept. So, there are nearly ten uh, uh, different kinds of activities there in Matific actually to understand just the place value. We usually provide multiple models, not just the same model. Uh, like multiple models means if you take any concept like fractions, we used to provide multiple models because Matific is uh, Max is abstract subject. and we have to provide multiple models to make it very concrete for our children that is the reason it's one of our core pedagogy why we are offering lot of interesting activity for the same topic right so maybe like for the place value how can i answer to your question is uh, like this okay just a minute lots of sharing i'm doing so this is how the place value you can teach using this uh, coins method but let's say the concept of 10 okay the concept of 10 is like a first standard activity the concept of 10 can be taught in different different ways in matific we provide multiple models like let's say acrobats as 10 maybe you can teach using this activity as kavita ma'am taught us a lot of interesting concept that can be done and then you can assign this as a school school work 10 as marbles 10 as birds 10 as coins 10 as boxes 10 as colors so maybe you can use it as a school work you can assign this as a homework you can use this as a test package you can use this as a remediation tool and you can use this as a revision tool so same concept either it's a fraction or a decimals or a multiplication the same concept but we provide multiple models you can make use of this in the matific platform okay so when the students come back to school also you can also have them in the ground and then you can do your you know arranging the number of students in terms of tens and hundreds and all that so you can do those kind of physical games also so you can have a combination of physical and virtual games to make it very interesting uh so how to teach standard one topic uh, time more interestingly so there's a, there was a question by uh, uh, an interesting teacher so uh, kavita ma'am showed one fraction right it is nothing but uh, it is a fraction modeling workshop from matific similarly we have uh, for all the concepts we have this kind of workshops available in matific platform that can be beats workshop fraction workshop time workshop all these workshops available in the platform you can uh, sign up and you can get these uh, topics and you can teach using matific itself because kavita ma'am taught fraction to us equivalent fraction using matific workshop why not us definitely we can do that and right now also in time also basically even when you're talking to your students even if it's first standard you could just ask them beta what is the time right now and then what will the time be 5 minutes later so a simple thing even while talking to students on a virtual platform you can have different different things and and you can say that i'm going to call a friend from us right now what do you think should get what the time be there a first standard kid will be able to answer let me tell me tell you they are very very intelligent today 
true ma'am and uh, there was a question is there any pedagogy to demonstrate data handling concepts to grade 2 children when you talk of pedagogy that means data handling as i just told you right now what a simple thing of data handling would be um just take any kind of um, figures data handling could be even the height and weight or whatever it is graph mm. and make them students create a data handling in the class itself um how many girls how many boys that mm. also could be a simple data handling uh age wise data handling so mm. you can have basically an experiential learning only using your own classroom mm. and create that kind of data super ma'am so like uh, you are touching a lot of cross curriculum cross subject uh, things uh, that, that's truly a uh, very good experience for the students i believe because you have touched the point of vaccination drive which is the current affairs so you are teaching maths using current affairs very simple yes. that's a powerful tool okay is there any upgradation of mathematics program for 8th 9th and 10 uh, venkata durga prasad ma'am or sir i am really sorry mathematics is a gamified online math learning platform when you go for higher graders the children lose its charm in the gamification so we keep it very simple from kindergarten to grade 6 so there okay. is no mathematics for 7th uh, okay how to make children learn tables easily uh, okay <laughs> uh, go ahead ma'am you can go with such simple ones like the 2 and the 5 and the 10 don't go with the complex ones first with the 2 and the 5 and the 10 you start with and then you go with the different things so you 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 take manipulatives initially and then show it 3 then 3 2 times 3 that becomes 6 so when you take manipulatives and show them lower class they get the concept and once the concept is clear then everything goes very fast no matter what the number is true uh i i personally believe multiplication is nothing but skipping addition if a school student knows addition really well he can be very good at multiplication right skipping addition means you are skipping a number line in 2 2 4 6 8 it's a two table 3 6 9 12 it's a three table so there are a lot of interesting activities in mathematics you should explore definitely for uh, teaching multiplication interesting interesting way as i told you before not one model multiple model yeah uh, how to teach a concept of division properties uh, for grade 2 So I think that simple. First of all, you can start with the thing that I have got about eighty chocolates, and you are forty students in my class. So how many chocolates will each one get? So simple, real. Start with a real problem, and then bring it down as to how you brought it across. So don't start with this. I'm doing division today. No, I have eighty chocolates. I have forty students. Now each one, how much are you going to get? How did you work it out? So they themselves will tell you how they worked it out, and then after that you can take them onto a different. Uh, games across and see how division can be worked across. Shakti, if you uh, have any game uh, to show that, please go definitely, ahead. Definitely, ma'am. We can show. Kal Selman Kureshi asked us, "Can you show one demo of activity if possible on Matific platform?" Definitely, why not? Uh, yes. So, like, uh, I'll show you a brief of Matific platform. Uh, not, I'll, I don't take much time here. So, this is Matific uh, platform. Uh, so, what you have to do is simply log into the platform. Uh, you will be having username and password here. Simply log in using your username and password. Uh, every teacher will be having unique username and password given by the Matific. Then you will reach this platform and uh, simply go to activities. Here, activities, browse activities is there. That's it. You will find a lot of interesting games here. Browse activities. That's it. so you can choose which grade you are teaching from kindergarten to grade 6 all the grades are here you can choose the curriculum which curriculum your school is following start from cbse icse uh, singapore curriculum hindi medium marathi medium all these things are here you can choose which grade you are uh, teaching uh, maybe if suppose 6th uh, standard suppose uh, ncert curriculum you are following and uh, suppose you are teaching a data handling chapter choose the chapter which you are te teaching the learning outcome you can teach that's it and there's a activity waiting for you very simple there's a activity that's it so this is how the platform will look like ma'am since you ask about an activity i'm just showing you the activity so activity will come with uh, teacher tips and lesson plan you can still use it but if you have your own lesson plan go with your, with your own lesson plan but last 5 minutes you can show this kind of activities like how kavita ma'am engaged us the whole session right at the beginning of the webinar 300 participants now also it's 300 participants means you have handholded us like for the entire session using this kind of uh, games so we can definitely teach using these kind of games to engage our children like that 
So this is how an activity will look like, ma'am. You can simply touch to form the bar graph. So what we are doing is here is we are not just teaching what of bar graph and uh, how of bar graph. We are also teaching why of bar graph. Why the bar graph is very essential for the uh, sixth grade student because it's a dynamic data. A fish can hide behind one more fish. So now it's all frozen. We have recorded. Now we can decode the data from here. We can clearly say 12, 13, 14 blue fishes in the aquarium, something like that. That's it. So this is how the activity will look like. I hope I can able to show you some activity, but sorry for interest of time. I should, I should not show you a lot of interesting activities here, but always just write back to us. India at mantific.com. We'll be happy to help you out. And Kavita ma'am, is there any other interesting questions? If it is for seventh, do we have activities? Yes, uh, we have a uh, six plus grade, but it's not hundred uh, percent curriculum coverage is there, but 70 to 80% co curriculum coverage is there, but we strictly adhere ourselves to kindergarten to grade six. Uh, the vast Chitra Rola is talking about measurement. Measurement topic is more activity or practical base. How can we teach or involve students for such topics? especially for elementary group in online classes with limited time. So do you have something for Shakti for measurement? Otherwise, um, you can uh, definitely have some activity measurement, but I would like to... Uh, Go ahead, ma'am. You can, you, can, you can answer your things. I'll okay. Search. I think the kitchen, I think the kitchen is the best place to learn maths and science because measurement out there, uh, to make any single thing, you do measurement. So you can even use a simple kitchen, simple, let's make lemon juice together, all of us, and then start with your lemon as to how many liters or milliliters of water did you take in, your sugar, how many grams of sugar you took in, how many drops of lemon juice did you take in. So all these will start giving you your measurements. That becomes really concrete. And then start with the simple virtual sessions. So use that to your maximum, even on virtual platforms. So as you see, measurement, we have 52 activities. So uh, definitely Kavita man's uh, kitchen episode is one among that. We have kitchen activity as well. What students will do is they will add uh, uh, like lemon juice, uh, 50 grams and cumin seeds, 10 grams like this. This is how they will make the potion. So measurement of uh, weight. So that's it. This is how students will learn measurement. Wonderful like, Shakti. So then I am talking about they're doing it and then they're actually testing it. So that's really nice. So you can really make fun and have a lot of fun. So 800 grams of uh, this particular portion. You can uh, add. This is a measuring. You are measuring and you can add it to the syrup. That's it. This is one activity from Matipic actually. That's it. So yes, we have 52 models for measurement. If suppose you are interested in it, always welcome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing this. <laughs> and so the next question is, learners find it difficult to understand word problems. Kindly help with a few tips. First of all, I would like to tell you that word problem is basically, uh, so when some your English is not very powerful, that also uh, really hampers understanding word problems because you need to understand the key word. Is it for, with, hmm. to? Hmm. So first, break up the word, word problem. Breaking hmm. up the word problem helps. And then start working on it. Okay. So uh, I have one response here regarding the word problem. So the word problem comes under A of pedagogy. Thing. CPA pedagogy It's what we call the concrete picture abstract pedagogy. So we'll uh, start a concept. Either it's a fraction means we'll start with the concrete models like this. So these are concrete models as you see here. And uh, pictorial worksheets and abstract word problems. So if we follow... This method in introducing the concept to our students, they can be very good at word problems. So Matific follow this. Matific will provide, first of all, games, concrete games, pictorial worksheet, low rigor, and abstract word problems last, which are high rigor. So if you follow this method of introducing word problem to your students, surely your students will understand the word problem a little bit. But definitely it uh, touches the part of literacy. I don't deny that. So uh, Komal has asked two times, why not answering my question? Matific is paid or free. I know that they've had a free thing for about six months. Now, Shakti, you can take it ahead. No, not for six months, ma'am. <laughs> so yes, if you want to try Matific uh, complimentary access, you can uh, just write it to us, india at matific.com. Uh, we will set up the platform for you. You try it for 10, 15 days. Like there is no payment required to try this platform. If suppose you want to take it as a premium, then we can talk separately, ma'am. 
Like, thank you so much for bringing that question, ma'am. Yes. And Komal, if you're asking, can we be access only through school or personally? So, yes. Komal, uh, as of now, we are uh, giving the success through schools. But soon you can expect Matrix is releasing uh, to you personally also. But as of now, uh, if your school is interested, please ask your principal to just send a mail to India at Matrix dot com. We will properly set up your school in just one day. If you mail us today, tomorrow your school setup is ready. That's sure. That's promise from Shakti. <laughs> you can try it out in your school. No commitment required. No cost. No commitment required. Try it out in your school. Only if you like it, then you can take it for premium. Great. So I think we've answered all the questions that has come across. Perfect, ma'am. Yes, and yeah. uh, it's almost six four, and a lot of people say thanks. And uh, like uh, one final thing I'll say before uh, finishing off this webinar, ma'am. Thank you so much for this amazing webinar. Lo thanks for introducing a lot of strategies to us, including Matrix, including forms, a lot of interesting things. And uh, please try it out. Summer holiday homework package, uh, dear teachers from Matrix. Ask your principal to mail to India at Matrix dot com. We'll be happy to help you out. Uh, one small uh, announcement is after this webinar ends, there will be a post webinar survey. Link will be shared here, or in the Zoom itself, there will be a post webinar survey. Please give uh, a, a, an attempt of the survey. It will be helpful for both Kavita Ma'am as well as for us. So, we'll share the, we'll share <laughs> so the once again, say thank you to Matrix and thank you to all of you all because you your engagement is what drives my passion to come across and explore new new things. So, thank you so much once again to everyone. Okay, so I'm just giving a big round of applause for you, Ma'am. Thank you so much for keeping us engaged. Thank you so much. See you soon. Thank you so much. Bye participants. Bye teachers. Bye principals.